And I personally have a rule of don't walk on a glacier you don't know in a whiteout. <laughs> it's, uh, I think less of a rule and just like common sense. <laughs> right here at Mount Rainier National Park. We've got Mount Rainier behind us. We are trying to go ski the Fuhrer Finger. Um, it's about like May, late May. It's a little late in the season, but hearing good reports, there's a bit of weather. We may have a weather window coming up, but the coolest part about this is we've got a special friend, Ian Walsh, professional big wave surfer from Maui, Hawaii. He just flew in this morning and we're gonna be taking him up the mountain. He actually uh, is planning on doing Denali and we were talking earlier in the season and he wanted to get some rope work, some training, some glacier navigation, all that stuff. He's not done much of that. So I invited him along and we'll go do probably the perfect mountain. That's a warm up mountain for Denali. So today we're going to school, we're gonna go train them how to use ropes and spiky stuff and dangly things. Get them all, get them all schooled. Go to mountain school. I have a new shovel and a new probe coming for Denali. So I'll be retiring this, this little kit here. You're gonna be sparkling on that. Yeah, mountain. I'm gonna be way too shiny <laughs> for, that, for that mountain. Say, no one, someone's not on a rope see him plunge in. What are we gonna do from there? Check on him first. For sure, but before we even check on him, because you don't want to yeah, go Yeah, you gotta to the set edge. up an anchor and... Exactly. Person fell in this way, this is the end of your rope. Close this up, go like that. I might tie this off real quick. And then I can kind of just walk gingerly like this and just come to the edge. Like this. And let's say I were to fall, yeah. like, it's got me. So you just want to know a three to one and a five to one because a five to one is most likely what it's going to take to pull someone up if you're by yourself. If you have two people, you're probably going to be able to pull them out with a three to one. There's been an avalanche. There's one person buried. Yeah. Where does this go? This goes wherever you want. So we're looking at the Fear Finger, which is the route in the book, is the classic descent. What we're trying to scout right now is whether we go up the Fear Finger and back down it, or we go more the classic up route, which is the mirror to the Ingram headwall, and then wrap around and come back down the mirror headwall. There's a couple different uh, pros and cons that comes with that. I'm trying to figure it out. Right now, I'm sort of leaning on we go over the mirror route. I'm boiling. <laughs> it's been hot. Yeah. yeah. It's warm. Uh, yeah, just making our way slowly up, hoping this thing doesn't uh, lightning on us. Yeah, it's like beautiful Hawaii weather over here and then like Mordor back there. Oh. So it's really hot, like hotter than I thought it was. So I'm resorting to drastic measures <laughs> because my I don't have underwear on under my long johns. I never wear that. And then uh, I didn't really think about that. So I'm going to cut these into shorts. <laughs> Not nice and good. We're about 10,400 feet up. Clouds are kind of moving right in on us. And beautiful. 6 p.m. 
This is our little zone right here that we're going to spend the night in. We had a change of plans from um, our original camp setup because the weather's been a little suspect and variable. So we're going to spend the night here and then we'd have a different approach to the summit tomorrow. So hopefully we wake up early and the weather cooperates and we can make it to the summit and then conditions pending in the snow, if Cody feels comfortable, then we'll head down the line he wants to hit. And uh, it's beautiful up here. What do you think, Cody? It's amazing. Yeah. Enjoying it. We're in a castle. Yeah, we're in a castle in the mountains. The highest uh, folks got in the past five days was about 12.6. Gotcha. Um, we we got up to like 12.5. Um, we did a couple um, stability tests on the way up. And what we were seeing was um, progressively more reactive um, as we increase in elevation. Interesting. So uh, at our high point, we got a ECTP 12, easy. about 12, uh, 20 down. Ooh, um, that's actually, yeah. And there's a, <laughs> that was kind of a storm density change. Um, just coming off of that, those are, no, those that, are my main concerns. That gives me pause for sure. Um, another thing I want to bring up is, so we've had rangers kind of out and about on the mountain and the past couple days on the Sherman side. Yeah. Um, We've had folks punching through just because those bridges are massed, but not really, um, not only, there's nothing to it. It's yeah, just kind of a veneer. That's right. I've, and so, we were talking about that in Baker last week when we had exactly that. It's my, the scariest thing to me always is when you get a little snow and a lot of wind totally. and they just flatten out and you can't see anything. Yeah, I think you guys should definitely continue to uh, just assess conditions as a client. As we go. Um, well, I wouldn't be fully committed to doing That's not good. There is a big, big cloud just sitting right on the top of the mountain. Cody, what do you think? What do you think about the weather? Not super favorable as of right now, but you never know with these kind of spring caps of clouds. It could be, it could burn off. It could get worse as the sun comes up wind is a little disconcerting you just don't know so we're just gonna keep going until it doesn't make sense anymore so let's do it Well, we just, I don't know, hiked almost a thousand feet above camp. We got to this ridge line and uh, we are kind of in it. We are in this cloud layer just sitting on the top of the mountain. And I don't know what it's going to do. So I think we're going to sit here and wait it out. Unfortunately, my gut instinct says it's only going to get worse because at three this morning when I walked outside, I could see stars. About four as it was starting to just the temperature warms up a little bit. All of a sudden the mountain had a cloud on it. 
this kind of reminds me of those like convective style caps but you don't know so Mike will sit on this ridge line and wait it out but I do know I'm not going to go up onto that glacier not knowing what's above me and knowing that there is Abbey Hazard in a whiteout. <laughs> Seems like a good rule to follow. You can't really force your way up there and try to hit a line that might be smoking in sun right now and we wouldn't even be there for three to four hours and maybe you know that's the way of the mountain telling us to pump the brakes you know they'll give you a sign to go up the same in the ocean like you see so many signs that are just telling you oh, maybe today is not the day and then when it is the day it's like the doors are just wide open and you can sprint right through them yeah yeah here's like all these tiny little doors you're like man if we could get through that door and then yeah. then that door and then if that door opens then we're good but you're like no i want the big i want the french doors opening yeah. up and yeah i mean i i always say in the mountains it's like i ride what the mountains let me ride and today it doesn't seem like they're wanting to let me ride I feel the same way in the water. I feel like the wave catches you at Jaws more than you catch the wave. Like that wave, you need to be on like a three foot triangle. So it's either coming right to you and catching you or you're not anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, put yourself in the right position. And like that's what we did today. We, we put ourselves what we thought in the right position with timing up the right route. I still think this is the right route, even though I know we're gonna get around the corner and it's gonna be sunny. I just know from Winslap potential exposure, this was the correct route for a safer up. Um, we're probably gonna have to walk down quite a bit okay. um, before we put on our stuff, so yeah. Any tips for the, uh, the downhill? No. Okay. <laughs> Doing good. We're back at the car park. 25 hours exactly. We're back. Now dude, you got the full mountaineering experience. Yeah, that was, you got learned the, a lot. Yeah, you got the hiking, the weather sleeping in the mountains. The only thing you probably didn't get was being scared shitless. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe maybe you did have that because those glaciers are terrifying, but did final it off with uh, the classic turning around. Overall, I hope that helps some way prepare for Denali. 